Okay, for this video, I just want to go over real quick setting up controls um, the RetroArch and MAME. I use a keyboard when I do most of this, so you might want to have a keyboard as well, especially for MAME. So try to do this as quick as possible. But here we go. This is going to be for any image you use. Go to RetroArch, either through your track mode setup screen, like on here, or through Emulation Station, go to RetroPy, then RetroArch. Go in there. First thing you want to do, go to Settings. Configuration, make sure save, and conf save configuration on exit is on. I typically have it set this way. Um, and everything functions perfectly. So on, off, on, off, on. Go to input. First thing to do is input hotkey binds. So there's three of them that are important. Quit RetroArch. So on my keyboard, I'm going to hit A when I'm ready to enter the inputs and then on my controller or on my arcade panel I'm going to press the corresponding button. So typically quitting you would want to use as your start button. Um, I'm going to use on my control panel it's going to be the first of the four buttons that are in the middle top of my arcade panel. So it's going to be the exit button. So I'll hit A, hit exit, then go down to the next one which is enable hotkeys, which normally you would want to use select. I'm going to use my mode button. And then the last one that is important is at the very bottom, which is menu toggle. I'm going to set that to the middle of the three buttons on the top of my six button layout, which is going to be your X button on a controller. And that comes in handy when you um, want to access RetroArch while you're in a game. <clears throat> now from there, input user one binds. It's all pretty self-explanatory. You'll, you'll hit A on your keyboard or A on your controller and then press the corresponding button. The B button on an arcade panel will be the bottom the first bottom button on the the three buttons. So if you have a, an arcade stick with six buttons for the normal buttons, it'll be the first one on the bottom. Okay, press the B button. Y is the first one on the top row. I'm not going to do all of them, just want to show real quick. The A button is going to be the middle on the bottom row on an arcade stick. And you would just go through, make sure you at least have buttons to go through all the way to L and R. The L and R button on an arcade panel, the L button is going to be the third button on the top, and then the R button is going to be the third button on the bottom. After you set all those, go back. Do the same thing for user two binds. All self-explanatory. These are all, this is the simple part of everything. So you go through and do all that. Like I said, with the keyboard, I like to use the keyboard. I'll hit A on whatever I'm setting, and then I'll press the button on the controller or on the arcade stick. Exit out of that. Exit again. Oops, sorry about that. Yeah, I already went over this. Just make sure your safe configuration on exit is on. Quit RetroArch after all your configs are done for your controllers. Now from there, the other thing would be MAME. So let me go to MAME and show that real quick. 
Mem is pretty easy, but there's a few things people forget to do or don't realize you should do. Um, and it can cause issues, so we'll go over that. This is the main important one. So for MAME, you just want to start any game, doesn't matter what. And you have to use a keyboard for this, so start your game, press tab on your keyboard. You're going to go to input general, which is going to set up for, your, for the whole uh, emulator. Hit enter on your keyboard. Go to user interfaces, hit enter. The important ones are the user interface controls on this part of it. So you're going to set your up, down, left, right, obviously to whatever controls. If you have an arcade stick or a controller, you're going to set it quick there. As it makes sense, up is obviously up, right? The other thing I highly recommend you do is make sure you always keep keyboard commands on this just in case something funky happens and you need to fix it. So for an example, to make sure you do this correctly, go to user interface up, hit enter, press up on your controller, then it's just going to show that command for up just on your controller, but you're going to want to hit enter again and then press up on your keyboard, that way you have that as a backup if you ever need to do anything else. Now if you screw up, let's say you press down instead, so now it's showing that my controller is, we have it set to up, keyboard up or keyboard down, we don't want that. So we'll hit enter and then escape and it cleared it. So then we can go ahead and set it correctly. I'll hit enter up on the controller, hit enter again, press up on the keyboard and we're set. So make sure you do those up, down, left and right. Select is going to be enter on your keyboard obviously. On your controller, you might want to have it set to the start button on an arcade panel where I have the four admin buttons. I have one marked as play, and that's connected to the second encoder, the player two encoder. So I want it set to the play button. So select, I'm going to hit enter, press the play button or your start button on a controller, then I'm going to hit enter again which I can't because it cleared the enter from the keyboard, so I'm going to press play, then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. Now I added both of them again. Cancel, I have set on an arcade stick or a control panel as my exit button and my mode button. So I'll hit enter and I'll press those two at the same time. So now that's going to that's gonna pull up the, the exit screen. Um, but I'm also going to hit enter again and hit escape so it's still set to my keyboard as well just in case. On a controller, you would want to press select and start at the same time on your cancel. So that's pretty much all you need to do on that screen. From user interface, go to other controls. The important ones here are player 1 start and player 2 start. And in your coin, 1 and 2. Obviously, you don't, you don't need to set keyboard commands to those, just your controller. Player 1 start, obviously, it's going to be your start button, or on a control panel will be your start button, or, you know, player start button. So you'll set both of those, and then you'll set your coin buttons. Coin 1 is going to be your first controller, the select button, or on a control panel will also be select or the coin, however you have it set. I have it set as my select button that I have on my control panel. After you get those done, like I said, those are the only four you need to do on that screen. And then you're going to want to set up your player controls. Player 1, you're not going to do any keyboard commands. You're just going to set your controller. So obviously up, down, left, and right. Set those to your controller or your arcade stick. Now when it says player 1, right, and then it says up, down, left, and right, that on a controller that has analog sticks, you'll just set, that, set those to your your right analog stick that comes in handy for your games like Smash TV and whatnot that would use two sticks. Now for your buttons, we're only setting, I only set buttons one through six, uh, Street Fighter style, so on an arcade panel, button one, two, and three are going to be your top three buttons, and then four, five, and six are going to be your bottom three buttons. On a, 
on a um, controller, button one is going to be your Y button, button two will be X, and then button three will be your left trigger, button four will be your B button, button five will be your A button, and button six will be your R trigger. So you got to make sure you set those correctly. Then the one thing that some people miss is going to be your start and select. Those you don't typically need in probably 99% of main games, but there are a few that you will need those set. Um, the Play Choice 10 games from Nintendo use that. <clears throat> so you just set those to your start and select, like you normally, where it makes sense. Obviously start, hit enter, press your player one start. Go to select, hit enter, press your player one select, and then you're good. That's all you need to set on player one controls. Player two controls do the same exact thing. You're up, down, left, and right. If you want to set your right analog stick, you could set those as well. On a arcade panel, I set the right, up, down, left, and right as buttons for games that would use that. So the middle two buttons out of the six button layout would be up and down. And then the top first button would be left. And then the last top right button would be right. And it works pretty well for an arcade stick anyway. Exit out of that. And that is it for main. So I'm going to go ahead and exit main. On a controller you could hit and select and start. On here I'm hitting exit and mode. Exit out. Kind of screwed up there. Um, then the other thing you can do which comes in handy with RetroArch is say we're in a game say Neo Geo for example Neo Geo only had four buttons A, B, C, and D let's say you want to set these properly let me just find a familiar game real quick play button, and go into there, it's running off a of Liberetro FB Alpha, so any of the Liberetro emulators you can do this on. On a controller, it's going to be select and X, on an arcade panel I have it set to mode and X. So I'm going to press the mode button, and the middle top row, and now we're in RetroArch. So if you're having problems with controls on a specific system, go ahead and do this. Go into settings, check your configuration, make sure everything's set properly, on, off, on, off, on. That's how I do it. The main one you need to make sure is just save configuration on exits on. Now go to your input, user one binds, and then just double check all your buttons. Um, obviously this is set, it's going to show the Neo Geo buttons but you can go through and double check make sure they're all functioning properly as long as you have it save on exit on you'll be good to go and your controls will be fine um, the other thing that you can do is in any of these games you go to quick menu hit your A button go to controls and then it's going to show you the controls for that specific emulator now Neo Geo only, is, only uses A, B, C, and D in the arcade, if you recall. Um, on an arcade panel that you have set up with Street Fighter controls, just six action buttons, <clears throat> typically A, B, and C, and D is just going to be the, the four buttons, the bottom two and then the top two on the left side. The right side two buttons you wouldn't use. Some people like setting it differently to where the bottom row, the first button is A, and then top is B. Top middle is C, top right is D. You can easily change that through here, which it's not changing the button layout, it's just changing what the buttons register as. So button A, I have set to B. Um, button C is to Y, so I would actually want that to be, for my comfort anyway, to be the X button, which would be the middle top row. 
So I would go over, find the X button. I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but go through the X button. And now I have my C button is registering as the X button instead. Now, if you only wanted to save that for one specific game, and this works for any game, any system that's using Liberetro, you click Save Game Remap File. Now, as long as you have your configuration set properly in RetroArch, anytime you load up the game, it will the controls will adjust to the way you set it through here. Now, if you wanted the whole system, such as Neo Geo, you might want to change the layout for all the games, since all Neo Geo games only use A, B, C, and D you would click save core remap file and then you're good press your A button save, it says remap file saved successfully good to go and that is pretty much it um, in a game when you're doing that quick menu just click resume you're still back in the game and you're good to go if anybody has any questions concerning controls um, Leave me a comment, ask questions. Um, this covers pretty much everything except for Daphne. Daphne is a whole other animal as far as changing controls, which is actually very simple. Just take some patience to figure out what you're doing. If anybody needs help with that, hit me up and I'll, and I'll do the best I can to guide you in the correct direction. But pretty much what I showed should have you up and running with any controller or if you have a similar arcade stick set up as I do, which is 20 button layout, 6 buttons for each player, and then a select and start button for each player, and then 4 admin buttons, which would be exit mode, menu, and then play. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you guys.